Now to child care. Lawmakers are calling it human infrastructure, a backbone of our economy, and it's an industry in growing crisis, with many workers now fleeing for better paying jobs. ABC's Karen Travers reports. <laughs> Leslie Spina has run Kinder Academy in Philadelphia for nearly three decades. She says she's now facing challenges she's never seen before. This is the first time in 27 years that we've had classrooms that are set up and children who want to go in those classrooms and classrooms empty because we don't have the staff in them. There is a child care crisis in this country. The biggest issue, hiring and retaining workers. The child care industry is down more than 125,000 workers nationwide, a more than 10% drop from pre-pandemic levels. Just since June, more than 10,000 child care workers have left the industry, many taking jobs with increasing wages. Child care providers are in the bottom 2% of wage earners across the country. Andy Crozier has worked for Kinder Academy for 20 years. She says she understands why people are leaving her industry. Who wants to come into this field right now? Like, no way. When you're seeing signs that Wawa will pay you $15, $17 an hour, I don't have to worry about children who need extra love, extra attention. Who would come here, honestly? The median wage for a child care worker is just $12.24 an hour. Is that worth it to be able to be struggling this much, to be having to call my family and ask for help with rent? Lauren Nickerson is a former child care worker from Florida who this year shifted to a job as a second grade teacher. She says she loved her job, but for nine years she was living paycheck to paycheck. When I first started, I was being paid minimum wage. Um, luckily, at the time, I was still living at home with my parents. Anytime I'd ask for a raise, it'd be like, that's not possible. No one in this industry gets paid that much. Leslie Spina is trying to change that. While she pays her entry-level staff a market rate, around $10 to $12 an hour, she offers health, dental, and vision benefits, a retirement plan, mental wellness care, a rarity in her field. Still, she wishes she could do more. We're talking about highly qualified professional teachers who are making salaries um, that are ridiculous and shameful. We should be ashamed. I would be so happy if we could pay people a living wage where my teachers with two children didn't qualify for food stamps. But raising fees isn't a feasible option. The majority of families that send their children to Kinder Academy are working class. It's very important that we are here and open and reliable because when they miss work, they don't get paid. Carnina Ginyard sends her four-year-old to Kinder Academy so she can work as a home health aide for her mother. I wouldn't be able to work if I didn't have the proper child care. Um, I feel Neve is safe where she is at Kinder Academy. Um, that's number one for me. American families are on average spending about 13% of their income to pay for child care costs for a child under five. It's very costly for parents. And then you hear how low the wages are. And I think the obvious question then is, you know, so where is the money going to? 50 to 60% of uh, a child care provider's budget goes to personnel, goes to wages. That is not the same for just about any other industry out there. That 50 to 60 percent amounts to a high child to adult ratio so that we have enough adults to take care of children. In Nebraska, North Platte Kids Academy board director David Peterson said the $11 an hour wage they were able to offer just wasn't competitive with other businesses, so they struggled with staffing. In August, Peterson and the board made the difficult decision to shut down. We talked about raising the, the rates that we charge, which we can do, but it starts to become a very cyclical thing because that negatively affects families that can't afford or don't believe they can afford more than that. That closure impacted Rosario Torres, a single mom to her kindergarten daughter and her one-year-old foster daughter. Finding another daycare in town that was open and also open to take a toddler was a lot harder because a lot of our daycares aren't taking children because they don't have enough staff 
or they have to reduce staff for the pandemic. Over 50% of all Americans live in childcare deserts in communities where there is an insufficient uh, supply of childcare. Add on, you know, this huge drop in childcare providers, and we're we're seeing that um, families can't get to work. And for many families, it's women who are bearing the burden. More than 1.6 million moms of children under 17 left the workforce during the pandemic and have not returned. Child care is a key component of President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. We need to bring costs down with a significant public investment in our child care industry. His ambitious domestic policy plan would put $225 billion toward child care over the next 10 years, funding for child care providers, raising the minimum wage for child care workers to $15 an hour, and ensuring no middle class families pay more than 7% of their income for child care. The plan also calls for universal free preschool starting at age three. Congress is locked in fierce negotiations over the Build Back Better agenda. How much of a priority is it for him to ensure that funding for child care workers is included in that final bill? Well, clearly it was a part of his initial proposal. He recognizes uh, the role that child care workers, many of whom also have challenges that are preventing them from the, them from being in the workforce. Republicans broadly oppose the president's Build Back Better plan because of the roughly three and a half trillion dollar price tag. But early childhood advocates say this is a pivotal time to act. We have this historic opportunity to fix decades, really, of, of failed child care policy. If we don't get this right, I, I just, I really have to question um, people's commitments to children and families and workers of this country. Leslie Spina believes there's a moral obligation to invest in early childhood education. And as the political fight in Washington continues, she just hopes her business survives. I'm sitting here watching my life's work perhaps dwindle away. And it's very sad. It's really very sad. And I hope that that's not what happens. But this is not sustainable. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.